Hello everyone, my name is Stone Skeleton, and today I wanted to do a tutorial for the tutorial of Hearts of Iron 4. I am in no way an expert, I only bought the game last month, but I've been really enjoying it. So I figured that this puts me in a unique position to give insight from one noob to another. Rather than a long look at how to play the game itself, I just want to provide you a more fleshed out explanation of the tutorial or the tutorial that I wish I got and just walk you through it to make it a little bit more digestible if you're trying to learn. I hope this video helps you and my friends who I can't convince to play uh, a, a solid understanding of what Paradox are trying to communicate with this tutorial. So, without further ado, let's uh, do the walkthrough. Ah, uh, bit of fresh loading, it's always good. All right, so welcome to the Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial. You'll be taking charge of Italy during the period leading up to the war. Reading the tooltips will help you to understand things as you play, so it is recommended that you make good use of them. See, when I played, I must have skipped that whole part. But... For the most of the time, you'll move around using your arrow keys, so that's what I use. You can uh, hold your middle mouse button, drag it around that way, and you can also zoom really far out and then, you know, really far into a different location. So a few different ways to move around, and it's asking us to first deal with the alerts at the top of our screen. Uh, those that have played other Paradox games might be familiar with this alert system. I was not at the time. In fact, my first issue was is I hit minimize and I couldn't find it. I restarted the whole thing just to find it again. But yeah, it's basically telling us that the first things that we should do is sort out these alerts up the top. Some are more important than others, but Let's just try to tackle them in order. Man, that music is bombastic. Try and tackle them in order. <coughs> so, first one is that we got research slots available. There's four research slots. This is the research tree. Although it might seem overwhelming at first, it is not actually too complicated. Let's speak for yourself. We have highlighted some technologies that are recommended to research in the beginning of the game. It's a good idea to research technologies that boost your country's industrial base, as well as more general military improvements. As the game progresses, it might be valid to research more specialized technologies, such as tanks or aircraft. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve. Okay, cool. So the game does kind of plot out for the tutorial, what you should first take. Um, I often take what the tutorial told me to take, which is if we go back into the science screen, uh, the first one is support weapons, which is a general kind of infantry and uh, motorized infantry. So I think it's good. Defense and breakthrough uh, stats. Um, for different troops, so defense is how much you have defending, how many attacks a unit can attempt to avoid while on the defensive, and breakthrough is uh, the opposite, like pushing forward. So, you know, when you're attacking, you want high breakthrough, that's kind of tanks and whatnot, and when you're defending, you want solid entrenchment, and that is more an infantry type situation. So we're gonna go ahead and research that. Um, we need, uh, electronic mech mechanical engineering so we'll take that that increases our research speed by three percent so you got lots of little flavor text coming with it and um yeah so we're gonna have to hit research that basic machine tool so industry is pretty important um how quickly you can build things how productive your factories are um how much oil and rubber you may have we'll get to that at another point so we'll take construction like it requires from me what's the last one we need uh, 
basic machine tools, which is up here. It's awesome. Uh, it lifts your uh, factory production cap. More efficiency. Sweet. So as you can see, that notification just disappeared. So we, we're going to hit don't show again for research. When you're playing this, maybe don't hit that button straight away. There's some good information that you can get by just mousing over and really reading the finer details. So the next one, we've got free civilian factories. The way I like to look at civilian factories is if they're like uh, your peasants or peons in a, in a Warcraft or an Age of Empire. They're your builders. They're the ones that are going to get things done, and the more of them you have, the more you'll get done. So this here is the construction screen. Uh, we've got all kinds of different constructions, but what this is wanting from us is it's trying to tell us that at the start of the game, if you start at 1936, before it all goes to hell, you want to build up a, a decent civilian economy. You want to be able to build things quickly when the going gets tough. So, um, to paraphrase here, the more civilian factories, the quicker things build. Civilian fact factories build factories. Um, so we'll go to Italy over here. This number here is your infrastructure. You can build infrastructure here. Uh, it provides a general boost to your territory. Things will build faster. You'll have more supply. You'll get more out of the ground. Um, there's quite a lot of positives to building infrastructure. And depending on your economy... Actually, screw that. No economy yet. <laughs> uh, what we'll do is we'll try and build civilian factories. See, what you can do is you can click. This number here is how many buildings it's got. Uh, so we can build one factory. That's the most we can build. Uh, can build some here. You can click on it. You can right-click to take away. It's a uh, left-click to build. Right-click to take away. Um... You click that, and then, so if I wanted to just put five down or fill it up, I would hit shift and click. And that's just going to fill the whole region up with whatever you want. And using these, you can kind of like, you know, down downgrade some of the orders or, uh, you know, you can increase the priority, whatever's up the top. This number here, you've got, so I've got, 20 factories and apparently nine are being used for consumer goods um so i only have 11 factories to build with so it's going to build these factories first move on to this one move on move on down the list but each factory that i build is going to join onto the pile of factories that are building more factories so that's cool I'm going to hit don't show this again. I just don't want to see it again. Next up, we have free military factories. This is our production screen. This is where we build our guns, our tanks, our planes, our, our support equipment, everything that we need to fight the fight. Um, <clears throat> there's two types. There's military factories, and we've got dockyards to build our ships now what we generally need a lot of is probably guns support equipment it all depends on what kind of army you're building but for the sake of the tutorial let's move on it wants us to build at least 10 infantry equipments so we're going to click on that infantry equipment and we can do it individually here we can control click to add five. So we've got 10 guns building. And if you want to change the view here, this kind of cleans it up for you. Now it's recommending that we also build support equipment. Now the reason why is we've actually got this uh, logistics book here. It shows us the things that we need or what we're making. Uh, we have a deficit of... 99 infantry equipment per day 
and we're missing 761 from our warehouse. We've also got support equipment. We've got a deficit of that. We're not building any of these, or we're building 10 of these now. So maybe like the recommendation is giving here is just kind of to uh, make sure we don't run out. If we run out, our men can't quite fight effectively. So it you know, wants us to get a couple planes. You've got a different kinds of planes. They're different things. You've got naval bombers for bombing naval things. Um, you've got fighters for shooting down other planes. You've got air support for uh, helping out your infantry. That's all later things. But we'll just build some of it because it thinks we should. Um... Uh, I'm just, you know, we can build everything, you know. So we need some towed artillery. Because we want to build, if we go back, uh, we are building for the future. It's for now and for the future. So try and pile these things on. Um, dun, dun, dun. So we can get some, oh yeah, we got to build, build a ship. It's recommending the Maustrelli class. We're gonna put all our dockyards on it but one, and then it wants us to build a convoy here. Convoy is used for international trade of goods and resources and to ferry troops around. But we got that, and I'm just gonna fill out the rest. All right, so as you can see, I'm using all of the military factories and I'm using all of my dockyards. So that is another notification <coughs> kaput. So I'm gonna hit don't show again for me. Remember you maybe keep those things up for a little while longer than I keep them up. All right, so national focus. This is the national focus screen and it allows your country to select its political goals, which will result in effects or bonuses that help the game progress. So to me, national focuses, each country has one. Not everyone is unique. Uh, as I hear Italy is getting a, a big new one for the expansion, but I kind of see them as like your unique talent tree almost. You can take these different... Uh, talents, research, things, whatever, to lead your country to different results. Sometimes it's as simple as something like this, which is Ethiopian war logistics. This is going to give me infrastructure and three a level three naval base or three naval bases. I don't know. It's going to give me some infrastructure and naval bases in Ethiopia, which will help the war that we will soon find. Some of these trees can be huge, like all the way around here. Anyway, um, the game is highlighted, some national focuses for us to choose, because it's gonna lead us down to an extra research slot. That's awesome, it means it's more research uh, to outsmart everyone else. Ha ha. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna take Ethiopian War Logistics. Cool. Now, next notification. We have no divisions in basic training. So we're not training any men. We have men on the field, but, you know, we want some backup fellas. So, excuse me. <laughs> uh, the recruit and deploy screen where you queue new divisions for training. We recommend that you add a divisional defenderia. Oh, that was bad. Uh so, oh, I got all the alerts sorted apparently, but we're looking at this one first. So the way that you train is you can click, click, oh, click, click. And, you know, if I wanted two sets of tanks, I would not do that because you can simply hit add unit. That means they're all going to train at relatively the same times if they have enough equipment to train off. You can see there that we're missing 680 infantry equipment, 70 trucks, and 60 light tanks. We're not trying to build tanks right now, so I'm going to delete this whole body thing. And I'm just going to add a couple of these. Now, I wish I knew this at the time, but 
you can set that just to one it'll only make one you can set or oh, get rid of this one too you know or you can leave it on infinite it's cool if you just want to always have like five sets of you know troops training or if you only need if I only wanted one batch of tanks one batch I just want one set of tanks sweet uh, that is how I would do that so the men are training uh what is this saying divisions that are trained in parallel will gain equipment at the same rate yada 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 make sure you read some of these things when you're playing good now that the alerts are sorted you can start diving into the details of waging war that's what it thinks that's what the game thinks that's all you need just a bit of that all right so it wants us to move our camera in the southeastern directions until you find eritrea in africa once your camera location has changed, select the divisions. So, what we can do to select these guys is, because these guys are all on an individual province level. The provinces are like where, the, like that. This guy occupies this one. You know, he occupy. They occupy there. They occupy there. You know, so each unit can occupy a tile. You can have several on one tile. But for one tile to be overtaken by another set of units, the other units have to be completely pushed back. All right, so now we're going to start playing offensive. Are you ready? Divisions can be joined together into armies, and armies used to draw battle plans, and they can assign a commander to lead them. While you have your division selected, click the new army button at the bottom of the screen. So the objective is an army exists. Now, if you're just looking to select your units in one area this is a good way to do it um you can now like add these guys to an army by clicking this plus sign down the bottom bam they are now in a new army if i wanted to take some units out of this army and put them in a separate army i could select them one by one oops go back to the army you know, like we got a set of mountaineers here. These guys, they fight good in mountains, as the name would suggest. Um, and this down here arrow here means that they are not trained. I think that means the reserves. So, the reserves aren't as experienced. They are, have a 25% combat metal fire. These bars here, this is, uh, what's it, organization and fighting strength now organization is pretty important it's like the health of your unit if they have no organization it's going to fall on back this is like your training bar it just tells you how far they are for the next rank this next one here is your plan preparation which we'll get into a bit further in and then this one here is entrenchment which again we'll get into later we still have this notification up here, unassigned divisions. And when you start a new game, it's going to be your first problem. It's, you're going to want to know how to get rid of it effectively. Because I've got units all over the map here. Look at this crap. There's units down here. I don't understand what's going on. If so, if this is confusing to me. So, the trick is, is read the tooltips, which I didn't do. If you shift click, you will select all these unassigned divisions. And frankly, I just like to put them in an army. And then, if you want to separate them further, you can double click on the unit type and it'll select all those types of units. So, mountain troops are pretty sweet. I'd actually like to take three. So, I'll shift click on three of the mountain fellas. I'll send them. All right, I need all the mountain fellas. I'm going to send them into that army now. So you can pretty freely send different troops to different armies. I'm going to send the tanks too. I'm going to put them all into this army that's in Ethiopia because I just want to have a big victory. So now it wants me to choose a commander. You choose a commander, click on the army, and then you assign a commander. Having a commander gives you just like sweet boosts and whatnot. Um, so... They all have these different stats. You get the general gist of it just by mousing over them. Uh, you know, like this guy, he's got some good stuff. You know what, I'll, I'm gonna make him the commander. And then of this army, which is just the army's 
of everyone else. We're going to give you this guy because there are lots of different reasons and that's probably for a deeper tutorial. But I just, my advice is just make sure everyone has a commander and something I wish I knew is a bit deeper is that you can make an army group and an army group is a group of armies. You can have up to five per army group and the army group can have a field marshal. Field marshals give even further bonuses. So for the, just the sake of moving on, we've got it. So now both armies have generals and a field marshal. If you see this flashing little thing down here, you can assign a new trait. And I'm gonna, this is like another leveling up thing. They level up, they get um, different tactics and there's so much depth to this game that you need, a, you don't need a thousand hour tutorials. You just need to, it's just a really fun game. You just need to uh, pick up some of the pieces, learn about some of the systems, and then you can kind of get the ball rolling on your own. Trust me, it's, uh, you're it's addictive. Anyway, division recovery, right? That sounds good to me. Charismatic, I like it. Um, oh, I don't have it. <laughs> I forgot, it costs a currency. It costs this currency up here. Command power, which is tied to your war support and uh, your base game. I'm not too sure what base game. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> the game is now trying to prompt me into fighting this, what is Africa again? There it is. It wants me to, no, oh, good. Creating an army was the first step. An army can give them orders, drawing battle plans. So it's flashing blue here. And it wants me to draw a battle plan um i can draw it here you know i can draw it here i can draw it here see as i have no access in this land i couldn't draw a battle plan from here but i own why well, i'm occupying here and i'm occupying here so i have two front lines that i could possibly use to uh, attack ethiopia so i'm going to draw one of them and Oops, um, no, I drew it for the whole army group, oopsie daisy, so I'll go ahead and delete that. The plan is only for this dude. Now, I've got 24 divisions on the line. You can always kind of have a look at this line, and if you control click, it'll select the units that were assigned to it. If you control right click, oh, uh, what? Oh, if you, sorry, if you control click, that assigns units to the order. So if I had two front lines, right, I'll draw another one here. It says no divisions, but I want to assign these guys to the front line because they're already here. So I would control click on that front line. And now you see here, you've got four divisions and over here you have 20. Most generals can command up to 24 divisions and most field marshals can field up to five armies. Um, so now we have two separate front lines going here, which is cool. <laughs> I want the tanks to be on the this front line because tanks have a lot of breakthrough. The stat that is going to push through these soft, squishy infantry and straight into the heart. So the next step for me is to draw an offensive line with battle plans. So right click and hold the mouse button on the map between these two points. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell my men to attack straight through here. And they're going to start getting ready. They're going to start building up their planning bar. Uh, there it is, plan preparation. They get a, almost a maximum boost of 36%, which is like a huge boost. Now for this line as well, I'm gonna to wanna to do something similar. And these guys are gonna attack like that. So what we have is a pincer plan effectively, which is pretty damn cool. Um, and now that that's set up, these guys are gonna get, once they unpause, they're gonna start getting ready for this. Um, so the game now, it, for this tutorial, wants me to learn how to use air. This is one that confused the hell out of me to start with. But uh, I really like, well, I don't really like, I like the air system in this game. It's cool. 
I don't understand it. I don't understand a lot of things, but it's fun. So in order for the troops to have a higher guarantee of success in battle, it is important to give them proper air support that they may require. So to assign your air divisions, you can assign them to these air spaces. These air spaces never change, even if the land changes hands. This is always going to be called the East Africa airspace. This is always going to be the Upper Nile. And this is always going to be the Sahara Desert airspace. For this battle that's going to come, we are attacking over the top the East Africa airspace. And we're going to send them there, which means that they're just going to perform missions in this area. Um, what are air missions? Well, you just assign your planes where to go and tell them what kind of stuff you want to be doing. This is the bar up here. It's pretty tricky to find for me originally. Um, you can do pilot exercises so they get experience, but you lose out on quite a bit of fuel. Uh, air superiority, which is one of the ones we'll be assigning. They're gonna, our fighters are gonna shoot down other fighters and try and shoot down bombers. They're gonna just try and keep the air nice and clear for our close air support, which are going to be supporting our troops. If you have air superiority over a region, your ground troops get pretty significant bonuses. So air is like a, it's pretty top tier in my opinion. So now the game is challenging us to go into the F1 standard map mode. As you can see down here, it's the default. Mainly shows you land, what's going on land in the real world. F2 has your navy. F3 has your air spaces. Um, F4 is supply. Uh, supply is how much infrastructure and how much railroads you can get to your troops on the front line. If we were fighting in the middle of the Sahara Desert, there'd probably be no supply. We probably would, would struggle terribly and there'd be standstills for weeks and attrition would be very high. So, so you get this, so we're gonna go back to this and it wants me to select the army. Uh, before we begin the assault, we should assign a commander. Haha, <laughs> we already did that. And then we need to click Execute Battle Plan, which we've got here. So it tells us kind of the gist of our plan. 70% value, it's advantage. The enemy is inferior, so that gives us a big advantage. And the division is still preparing, so they haven't, since we haven't unpaused, no one's ready yet. This green bar there is a representation of our forces versus theirs on the border. Um, so, this guy's just chilling. We've got more notifications, but while that army gets assembled, we'll let the army get assembled. They're all going to start moving. They're already there. They're already on their borders. So, as you can see, if we speed it up a little bit, that they're planning bonus is in effect so we can give them some time to get ready but look at the other ones they got decisions available decisions um kind of deal with the political situation on the nation you're playing some countries have way more decisions than others they can affect your stability they can get you war support they can do quite a lot of things for you it's fueled by your political power which is up the top here if you stay moused over, it shows you kind of some of the things that are affecting it at the time. You get a 25% bonus for being on recruit difficulty. That's, uh, that's beautiful. Um, cool. So that is going to be a notification that comes up a lot. So is this insufficient resources one or not enough manpower. These ones I kind of find insignificant. So if you hit right click, you can just get on rid of it. Uh, missing equipment production. Look, I need to be making trucks and light tanks. Um, so if I wanted to do that, I'm going to have to pull back a bit. I'm going to lose some factory production, but I will have the tanks rolling, which is the goal. What's the other one that I'm missing? Trucks. So i got to build trucks now. So this notification is going to tell you what you need to reinforce and keep your army running. Um, to make it go away, build the things that it that you need to build. Um, 
notifications. Yeah, so there's other notifications I might want back. Uh, it's a shame, but luckily there's this dismissed alerts button up the top right here. So you just go to that one, brings them back. Insufficient manpower. I need more equipment. I will fix it when I have time. Thank you. Uh, insufficient resources. We can trade for that. So you can go here, rubber, you know, we need three. You can only really trade in variations of eight unless it's a puppet state or something or how much they like you. We only need three and you can't stockpile resources. So I'm just going to not buy any rubber until I actually need eight rubber. Which for this tutorial, you don't. Most of the time, it's just a small... Small... Uh, small depends on how you want to see it penalty to your production i make 1.68 trucks a week but if it had rubber that number would probably be a fair bit higher all right so we've got these guys on the border here um and they're still no they're ready they're ready and they're entrenched so they've got a 30 percent defensive bonus and a 36 percent attack bonus both of these armies are ready gung ho to go. So I'm going to hit the go button on them. They're ready. They're beginning the offensive. And when we've occupied enough of the territory, they will surrender. So we've unpaused the game and our objective is Ethiopia has surrendered. All right, so some of the other things we have while this is going on, on the actual war front, because of those offensive lines we drew, which we kind of just drew in the middle, we have two fronts going. Now, still, I have the option of taking a man off this front and assigning him with control click to this n attack order on this side. So I've now moved one division. He's going to start moving on over. This is our we're at war notification, tells us where, tells us how's it going when we click on it. Can't do anything about it. Um, it you can't right click it. Decisions available. Yeah, there's lots of decisions available, costing my political power. I'm not going to probably talk about these today because they're a bit, uh, <laughs> they're a bit more than this tutorial offers, I think. So decisions is your first tab then we've got intelligence agencies you can trade civilian factories your peons for the construction of a civilian agency we'll do it here um civilian regular not spies and it's a lion also not lions cool so in 30 days with my five factories, we shall have an intelligence agency. Um, this gives you spies. It gives you like certain advantages. You can uh, do plots and schemes to your advantage in a very grand strategy kind of way. Uh, research. This is all just going, which is nice. When it's finished, it'll tell us. This is our bonus. Tells us why and how. Diplomacy. This is up here. This sees who we're friends with, what's going on. Italy, we're guaranteeing the uh, independence of Albania. Anyone attacks Albania, we go to war with them. We're at war with Ethiopia. Um, it tells us how much we like them and how much you like them. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, this is your trade screen again. We've got a deficit of three rubber, but we have plus those six steel. You can't just sell more. You've got to actually go into your political screen. This is the leader and change your uh, trade policy. So right now we're set to limited exports, but if we set to free trade, we'd go from sending 25% of our resources to market to sending 80%. So it's a big difference there. Uh, construction, now I just heard a sound. All right, modify officer core. You're going to get this one quite a lot. You can use your political power to get uh, chiefs of staff that give bonuses to the different branches of the military. So you've got Air Force, Navy, and Army. Then you've also got a High Command and a Theorist. These all provide different bonuses to your Army. 
and they start providing you with army experience, which is used to buy different military doctrines and bonuses and designing your divisions as well. Cool. So I'm going to just assign an army commander to get some more. Uh, let's have a look at this one. Let's do maneuver. Division speed plus 10. And we get nine experience daily. <clears throat> so these things here, they give you some information about the battle. What have we got? Oh, jeez. Always hit pause when you get time. And we've also finished our national focus, which is nice. So we got details. Um, I'm going to hit don't show. And now we've begun down this tree. We may as well take another one, which is industrial effort. We get two extra building slots in those regions. And we also get two free civilian factories in those regions, which is huge. It's, uh, four free peons, really. Um, Wallalo. Now, they're all attacking. These are some flavor texts coming at you. Germany's embroiled in the civil war. Betrayed by the military, we cannot suffer the same. Um, so yeah, these guys, they're just doing it. You can individually order them. You can go look, like if I wanted to press, I go back F1. You know, my mountain men, I want them to definitely attack through the mountain. See these mountain men, they should be here attacking through the mountain. Mountain men should be fighting on the mountain. So I can go through and kind of individually guide some of the units. Um, mountain men. Now you can play on different speeds with the plus and, you know, so you can kind of just, if you are in a bit of a stale moment, don't worry, go up to speed four and just make sure you pause a little bit to reassess the situation. We're winning here, but you know, it can change really quickly when you speed up too much. So go at your own pace, uh, maybe like avoid multiplayer until you had a game on your own as well as a good tip that I can give. Um, so yeah, they're all just cranking away back at home. Oh. Um, we're still recruiting those troops. We've got everything building as, uh, Oh, why is that mass over? Anyway. Um, as time goes by, see regular spies, also not lions, is ready. Now we can go into these different wacky things that give you different bonuses. Um, they give you like, it's just, yeah, the crazy events and espionage to bonuses over wars or technologies. But yes, with the battle plan that we did there, they're still going strong. You can see the line. If you, oftentimes you'll see maybe no division selected. Um, if you see that, you can delete the battle plan. Or, but yeah, while you're waiting for war, you can do some more building. You got navy as well. Navy is confusing to no end to me. So something that I like to do is just. Um, I just select all of them, I think. I think you go... Oh, don't show me again. I just select all of them. Um, I, just, I don't know how you do this. How do I merge all the commanders? It's a, it's a daunting task, so even I don't know. It's, um... Maybe you select... All of them and then just send them to the same port. Ah, I knew, I swear I had the trick. It's, um... I swear I had the trick. Anyway, they're just fighting. I was just trying to figure out the Navy. Watch another video for the Navy. I'm not all there yet. I swear I had it though. I thought I had it all. I swear I had it. All right, so we have other notifications popping up. Our research is done. Hurrah. 
something that's cool is that even when you're not like if you're not on the ball researching um it'll still the bar will still keep going for you so it's all right to forget uh we've got these some of these troops ready to deploy i haven't set a region for them yet so you have to go location and anywhere in the green the red is places that we occupy but we don't necessarily own so in the green you can choose a location i'm going to drop them in sicily because i might deploy them at another time to a front line time decisions well this is uh don't show again it's about the naval treaty um it affects how many uh i believe carriers and whatnot you can have We've got the unassigned division thing again. So again, shift click, we'll get all of them. And I'm just gonna plop them into the defense home army. You can rename armies up the top here, like home army. You can customize it if you need to, you know, maybe like a shield and green. So he's just kicking ass, this guy. He, he's all over him. So it's always just kind of looking at these notifications going, oh crap, well, missing equipment. Mm. Pretend that they're your boss, these things. They just tell you what to do and you do it. Trishnerish, I'm lacking four rubber, oh my god. Once you accept that you're a slave, you just kind of set your strategy and you just let it go. Um... And it's really satisfying at times to see your strategy go. Sometimes you need to put it at five speed. Like now, because we're so close to the capulation. Um, I'm going to slow it down to show that we have this one, which is lame. Resistance to occupation. You're going to see this one a lot. And the quick way to get there is go to your flag, shortcut Q. Um, oh, that's another hot tip is if you right click a country, you can see information about them. And the more spy stuff you have too, you can see in the Intel ledger. It's all good stuff. Um, all stuff to go through the menus. The number one tip of playing Hearts of Light is leave your mouse scrolled and actually have a look at the tool tips. Uh, you will learn so much. It's not Crusader King's awesome but it's still pretty good so we'll go to here and you go to occupied territories um in order to combat resistance and police the population occupied states will need to be garrisoned uh which is important so this is your resistance bar here and this is your compliance bar here you get uh bonuses from compliance and you get damaged buildings from resistance this is where you can change your default troop that looks after it. I find horsemen, they're always pretty good at suppression. That's the stat there. And you can change your general policy on how your occupied territories will be held. As you can see, you can go from no garrison to civilian oversight all the way to brutal oppression. I generally just do military governor to just keep things in check. But you're going to see that one a lot, and that's kind of... There's different ways to deal with it. Another one is actually I have my agent. Um, if I go... Where's the spy screen? Uh, spy screen. So this is my agent, and I might actually decide to get her to root out resistance. So she's going to go there. There's different missions for her to do. Or oh, with different bonuses that are nice. More just millions and billions of in-depth ways to play and go through the war here. It's So what have I played? I'm probably up to like 60, 70 hours. And just the, the sheer amount of onion-like Shrek depth is beyond measure. But yeah, they're going to keep going. I still have insufficient resources. I can now promote another high command or a theorist i'm not going to do that i'm going to save my political points when i may need them um you know like i said i'm not the best so i don't know the optimal use but i feel like this 
this game doesn't need to always be played optimally. I think you can make little mistakes and um, you learn from them. Start again if you have to. I probably started again 20 times because I always learn so much and just, and just need to go back um, and try again different ways. So this branch is always there. It's, um, oh, I finished that too. Dispersed industry or concentrated industry. Oh, so much happening at once. It's a, it's a shocker. They've capsulated, giving us 50% of their stockpiled equipment. Great news. Now this is the peace screen. Um, here is where you take turns with other countries involved of the war to kind of slice up your conquered territory. I'm going to choose straight up to take Ethiopia and that's my offer to them. They're defeated. They, I believe they have to take it. Uh, I've sent the offer, um, ended my turn. Now I hit done because I'm done. So we're back to just the situation of having more research to take. Dispersed industry just means you're less chance to get bombed, but slightly less production, slightly, not very much. And concentrated, I like concentrated. If you're gonna bomb me, like you're gonna bomb me anyway, I'll be right. That's my opinion anyway. <laughs> it's not a fact, don't take my word. Um, and I'm just gonna take, what's next? Um, get some proper artillery. We'll get the interwar artillery because you wanna keep your artillery fresh. You're probably gonna use a lot of it. So, I'm victorious. Huzzah, huzzah. Um, a glorious day for Italy. Now, during peacetime, you may want to transport some of your troops back home. We got a lot of troops here. We got tanks, got... You know, I only want... Not you. Oh, not like that. Look, that's... We're gonna send them... To get these boys back home, we actually have to send them to a province with a dock. They have to take the dock, get the dock. Once four out of, once zero, once four out of four divisions are standing at the port, um, they'll be able to transport to a different dock area. Um, now there's a lot more I could have probably covered in this tutorial, but I think there are other ones online that would go into more depth. I just really wanted to, from one noob to another, kind of show what I've learned and what I've enjoyed. Probably could have been a little more concise, but oh well. I, I hope this kind of helps. So now that these boys are here, we can transport them to another port. They can go here if they want. Um, they can go wherever the world's their oyster, just like yours. And if you followed this incoherent walkthrough, uh, with all your might, you'll see the same screen as me. You've now completed the guided part of the tutorial. You can continue playing as Italy if you wish. Read the FAQ or the Italy playthrough if you find yourself having difficulties. The help button in the top right will allow you to access the FAQ at any time. Um, thank you, everyone. I've been Stone Skeleton. Make sure you read those tooltips. You have a good one.